What's going on? What's going on? We're back. We're back. We're going to talk about the quality of life again. We're going to, we're going to touch on that because it, it's, it's really to the point, like I said earlier, we just don't know where we can go and where we're safe. Um, I, they talked about the seniors. Well, what the seniors are going through with the 901 Plaza is horrific. The drug dealing. The, the people laying in the hallways, sleeping down in the parking garage. Uh, um, it's just not safe over there. If you go into that courtyard, they're all sitting out there wheeling and dealing. And these are people that were out there when I was out there 30 years ago. Like I said, I don't have no shame to my game. I'm going to keep it nappy. These are now people when we were 30 years ago. We were out there. They're still out there. But what we do have is a lot of overdoses in the senior community. And when I say senior community, I'm talking about 55 and up. That's who I'm talking about. If you walk down Main Street any given day, and if you're really looking, you talk about a walkable city, then you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, I do see a grave difference in the change in the Bowman Towers corridor. You don't have what was going on down there 30 years ago. But it seems to be creeping back. It seems to be creeping back. Whether the police's hands feel like they're tied because they don't want to be accused of being racist or the mayor doesn't want, or the administration, I'm not going to say the mayor, I have to stop that. The administration does not want to shine that type of light on peace skill. Well, it's there. As much as they keep the police blotter from being published, it's there. We have sex offenders living in communities that no one knows that they're in the community unless you know, and if you know, you know. And we know that there's a few that no one even knows are here. They're, they're walking amongst our regular citizens. And um, not that they're going to pull them to the side and rape them in the corner. I'm, I'm definitely not implying that that's what's going to happen. But people need to know what's going on in their community, good and bad. Okay, And that's where the quality of life and the police blotters need to come back out. People need to know, well, like I said, I'm not going to go down there past 9 o'clock. We had a, a restaurant that opened uh, last year that had quite a few incidences. Now I see it's calmed down. Whether they threatened them, whatever they said they were going to do, it has calmed down on Main Street. I will not name that business, but everyone knows what business I'm talking about. Um, I, would like, I would like for Peace Skill to be real with this stuff. Keep it nappy. Let us know what's going on. The community, there's plenty of folks in the community that would be willing to go out and help and outreach. And, and, and they talk of mental health. But speaking of mental health, let's talk about the shelter. The shelter who houses mainly non Peace Skill residents. They're either coming from down county as far as New York City. Okay, I've not seen any from up Dutchess County here, but most of our residents that are down at that shelter are not Peace Skill residents. And the ones that are Peace Skill residents it's that that recidivism is this revolving door. They're there for a year, and then they go out, and they do something, and then they end up coming back there. Um, I, I, for me, I think the shelter has um, run its course in peace skill. And people aren't going to like me when I say that. And then I'm going to say it again. I'm not against homeless. I've been homeless. I did the drugs. I did it all. But there's some point now where you have to stand up right. Upright, And then only people to keep their feet on the ground is to put some responsibility on their shoulders. And the way things are going, we're not doing that. And that's nationwide. It's not just Peace Skill. But I'm only concerned with what's going on at Peace Skill, a place that I love, will always love, will die loving. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to see other folks get involved in the political aspect of the city. We have this one party rule here, and as you can see, what they've, what they've done has ruined the city. It has. It's, it's, it's ruined the morale of the city. We've allowed people that have just moved here, like I said, in 2019 to tell us homies what's good for peace skill. Okay, so let's, let's all sit at the table together. You know, I, I tend to drag my own chair since they don't invite me to the table. So I drag my own chair and I sit there and I listen. And I'm not liking what I'm hearing. I'm not liking that the community is not involved more like it should be. 
I'm not liking that the churches have become so political that they're not seeing what's right in front of their faces. And they have to see it because they're giving out meals on Fridays, one church in particular. Uh, so they have to see what's going on and who's on these lines for this food. So what I would like to do is see Peace Skill step up to the plate, be honest about what's going on, reach out to community members that have been there, done that, and see what we can do to make things better. And that's what I think should be going on for Peace Skill. Um, like I said, I'll be do, doing plenty more of these podcasts. Today is a little short, but we'll, we'll come back with more. And, okay, so now we're back. Let's talk about this forum they had on March the 30th at the Red Door. Uh, this Peace Skill Walks and all of these folks that just moved here who were telling us what's right for Peace Skill. Now, uh, this Peace Skill Walks, you know, I get it. I get it. They want to blame the roads for the, for, for the cars getting into accidents. How about we blame these drunk drivers and these people that are licensed that shouldn't even have license? That was rolled out during the, the uh, COVID where they wanted all of these uh, migrants, whether they're legal or not legal, to be able to obtain licenses so they can get to work. Never seen that rolled out for American citizens. Never. Never. So now we've got all of these people driving, some of them can't even read, don't know what a red light is, but we got this piece of walk saying it's the design of our road. I heard a young man speak, I went to a, a forum they had at the lofts, and the young man spoke about how he would walk from the train and almost got hit for three times. I really wanted to blurt out, watch where you're walking, because no one's driving up on the sidewalks to run you over, unless you're walking in the middle of the road coming down Hudson Avenue, well that's a stupid thing to do anyway. Um, you will stay on the sidewalk. Yes, there's been some horrific accidents, largely due to speed. Has nothing to do with the design of the road. Um, I don't know who this kind of green person is, really. I've seen him a couple of times. I know he's ran for office. But how dare you think that you can come here and change the designs of our streets? I think that P. Skill, once again, our, our hometown activist, I was very surprised that he didn't show up. I sent him a text and asked him, please go to this forum, since he's more, let him tell it, adapt to talk about these things, because he'd worked with H.R.I. Brown, he worked with Jesse Jackson, he's organized. If all of these things are true, and you've done all of this, why is Peace Skill staying still in the same position that it is now? Why are we still fighting the same fight 30 years ago about housing? But we got some people that come here from Manhattan and Brooklyn that are now talking about housing, not including low income housing. They're using the word affordable. I guess low income is morphed into that some kind of way. I'd like to know how that's working out. Um, like I said, Peace Skill Walks, welcome. But you know, you have to include us. You're not just going to come up on the set and just take over. I won't allow it. And I'm hoping that other people that are watching this podcast will, will step up. Now, let's go to the marijuana. Marijuana, marijuana, marijuana. The mayor announced that the Canis, Office of Cannabis Management has finally come down the state and the county and shut down these illegal weed shops. Like I said in a previous podcast, I went to the mayor and spoke to her when they had these signs, puff, puff, pass, pass, poppy stash. Uh, smoke shop right across the street from where she parks her truck. Did they go in there, by the way? I'm wondering. Um, these are all of these shops that have been here for better than a year. Now, all of a sudden, they're being blocked from going to the planning department doing what they're supposed to do so they can become legal shops. Like I said, I was against them opting in from the beginning. Not against the joint, just against the fact of opting in considering what we've gone through as far as drugs in Peace Skill. And by the way, there was never really any marijuana drug bust in Peace Skill. Most of our drug busts were federal, which was crack or, or, or a higher drug. Never any pounds and pounds of marijuana seized. We have a, a police officer now, two police officers, um, who want to open up shops. And I got to wonder, well, what about all those folks of, of, of color that you've arrested for marijuana down county or in Connecticut, who I think one officer is from Connecticut. Now you got them fighting each other 
because one doesn't, you can't open a shop a thousand feet from another. Street. This is something that Peace Hill should have thought about before they rolled out this welcome everybody. You know, everything ain't a bunch of rainbows and fairy tales running around here. This is real life stuff. We have children that are chewing edibles. Don't know how they're getting them. I guess the same way we were able to get beer when we were minors. We wait outside the store and have somebody get it for us. I, I, I think that Peace Guild needs to rethink their one sanctuary city and two marijuana laws. That's what I think Peace Guild ought to look at again. And I'm hoping that if someone else would start to run or primary these people, however you're going to do it, do not let these people continue to have one party rule in Peace Guild. And that I agree with Daryl Davis on. So you all contact folks and see if you want to run. Contact me. Let's see what's going on. And let's get some people to stand up against the people. My days of running are over. I'm not tired. It's just my days of running are over with. So let's get some young blood out here. Let's get some people out here and get some things doing. And, and, and that's what I have to say for today. Thank you for listening in. I'll be back in a couple of weeks.